everybody, and welcome back to Milkshakes Markets Madness. This is a show about investing, financial markets, and everything in between. My name is John Kutsmita. This is Brent Johnson. If you're unfamiliar with Brent and his dollar milkshake theory and what that says about the global financial system, we encourage you to check out the Start Here playlist at the top of our YouTube channel. It'll take you down that rabbit hole, give you some food for thought. Now, what we're doing here, particularly because Brent has a trip coming up, we usually do uh, a weekend episode that kind of recaps what's going on. It's a little bit of a longer recording, but Brent is going to a conference. We've been mulling around an idea of, of kind of doing market updates throughout the week anyway, so what better time to try rolling some of that out? So welcome to our flash market update. In this video, we're going to, I guess Brent will start out by talking about the FOMC. The Fed just came out and uh, made an announcement today that they would not be raising interest rates. Yeah, you know, it, it was, to me, it's, it's kind of interesting because I thought that the meeting was very similar to the last meeting. You know, he, they didn't raise, but they indicated that they still had a lot of work to do. Um, Powell even made the comment that they weren't even thinking about cutting. And if you remember the last Fed meeting, kind of the big takeaway from that was the dot plot was that they had removed a couple of the cuts that they had previously forecast. Um, and when this time when he kind of reiterated that, listen, we're not even talking about cuts, it kind of reminded me of a couple of years ago, we're not even thinking about raising rates, right? Now he's done a total 180. We're not even talking about cuts. Um, however, there were several times where he kind of had the opportunity to indicate that they might hike at the next Fed meeting or that, you know, and, and he just didn't do it. And I, I'm not exactly sure what the comment was or whether it was just the fact that he didn't get super hawkish, but the market took it as very dovish. Uh, I thought it was pretty neutral myself. I wouldn't say it was overly hawkish, but I didn't think it was overly dovish too. But because he didn't kind of hammer home that another rate hike was on the table, I think the market took it, whether incorrectly or correctly, took it as the Fed is done. And, you know, now it's just a matter of waiting until the cuts come. And bonds made a big move. Equities, you know, closed at the high of the day. Gold had sold off originally and then it bounced a little bit, kind of closed flat. So I'm actually super curious to see what happens over the next couple of days. Um, because again, I didn't interpret it quite as dovish as the market did. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see if the Fed tries to walk this back at all, or if, you know, they kind of uh, go with what's happened and say, yeah, that that was the right way to interpret it. I mean, a huge move in, in, in bonds, first of all. We've Leading up to this FOMC, there's just so much pressure on the long end, partly because of uh, supply issuance and various narratives around that. There was a lot of fun being made of the idea that this is the highest rates have been since, and then insert whatever date you want. Yep. 2007 was a popular target for a while. But you know, to see the 10-year more or less move somewhere between 15 to 20 basis points and yeah. You know, MBS markets and anything correlated to the treasury markets had massive, massive moves. Would you say that was there one particular market that had more of an outside mover reaction to this than the other? Would you say the move in equities um, reflected that in the bond market, or where do you think some of this balancing out came from? Well, I think I think the biggest move, I guess, if you were to say like kind of on a historical basis or relative to what it typically does, would be like short rates. Which is pretty interesting because literally just over the last couple of days, one of these uh, Drucken Miller interviews has been making the rounds, and Drucken Miller said he's super bullish on the front end of the curve, and he was, you know, I think he even said two years was like his favorite trade or something. And sure enough, Druck being Druck, he at least for the last forty-eight hours, he's been totally right because the two-year bond rallied like crazy. Um, and it, so, so again, relative to normal, I'd say that was the biggest move. The interesting thing for me is. Even though the market took it as super dovish, you know, I, I I can't sit here and say that the market can't continue to rally, but I just, there's something in me that, and maybe it rallies for a week or two. Remember I said last week at our weekly update, perhaps at this week's Fed meeting, Powell would be not as hawkish as expected, and therefore we might get a couple weeks of a bounce. So I'm really interested to see whether we got a couple hours worth of a bounce or whether this turns into a couple weeks, regardless of which it is. I just don't think the worst is necessarily behind us. I don't think we're going to see an ultra dovish Fed going forward unless 
we have further downside in equities or or higher volatility or however you want to describe a, a, a higher volatility environment. Uh, so 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 the most interesting thing for me or the thing I'm most curious about is again whether this bounce lasts for a couple of weeks or a couple of days or whether it's it's over by the time we come in tomorrow morning and and I just don't know. I lean towards the fact that we we could very easily sell off into the end of the week, especially when we have uh, non farm payrolls, uh, because again he was very clear we're still data dependent. He 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 wasn't ultra dovish. He just didn't say anything really hawkish, and as a result, I I think and we'll see if I'm right or not. But I think the market kind of heard what it wanted to hear. Um, so it'll it, to, to me the next couple of days are going to be really interesting. Well, anyone who's new to our conversations and to this show. A theme for us all year has been violently sideways. Now, anyone who is new or familiar with the show and hasn't really been staying in tune with us the last couple episodes, we have talked a lot about the market trying to contend or get comfortable with the Fed's uh, stance around higher for longer. So markets tend to overreact. You know, the, the Fed may be back pedals a little bit on the, the tone that they, they were using, maybe not so hawkish, however the market wanted to interpret that. But so maybe this rebalancing for higher for longer went a little too far. So part of this pullback is just things calming down, but it does seem like a setup for more violently sideways where we just kind of go up and down, up and down in, in, a, in a sideways band. And even if you know markets rally a bit, then pull back. It, it, it fits right into that framework we've been talking about all year. Yeah, and, and the thing for me, you know, I, I, again, I think back to Druck's comment. When I say Druck, I mean Stanley Druck and Miller for, I, I probably shouldn't just say Druck. I guess people in the industry probably know who that is. But if you're kind of new to this, you're probably like, who the hell is Druck? But Druck is a legend. He's like the greatest money manager ever. And, you know, and, and his comment was that he's very bullish on the front end. And I think that's because he was anticipating the Fed having to cut. But he was also bearish on the long end because he thinks the government's going to still spend money. And I'm I'm with him on the long end. I, I think that yields on the long end probably have higher, barring a crisis, right? Barring a crisis that that sends a huge flow of capital to to to, to treasuries. Um, I think that the the long end probably does go higher. And I think that's what the market over the last couple months has had the most trouble with was that the fact that the long end started to rise. And because I think the budget deficit is going to be bigger than many people expect, I still think there's trouble to come, you know, kind of in the markets. On the front end, I, I just really don't know. Um, I, I think it's pretty interesting that it, it rallied as much as it did today. But again, it, I'm kind of of the opinion that the only reason the front end would rally that much is if the Fed was going to start cutting. And I just don't think that they're going to do that, um, barring a crisis. So, you know, again, this is... This is why we do what we do. This is what makes it interesting because it's you know it's it's the biggest puzzle in the world and trying to figure out how it all is going to play out is uh, it can be maddening but it's pretty fun as well. Well, there's a lot of criticism from not only Druck but from the financial markets across the board in regards to the big mistake. Many pointing um, the blame towards Janet Yellen that the Treasury didn't fund itself when 30-year rates were sub one percent. That's a big part of the conversation going on. But before we go down that rabbit hole. Um, and turn this flash update into a full weekend episode. Uh, we will we'll cut it there, and um, we uh, we'll, we'll we'll see everybody in a couple of days. Hopefully, as this is continues to transpire, um, we'll make sure we get this video out to you before Friday and the non farm payroll. So, of course, by the time you're watching this, all bets could be off once that data hits and and the markets respond to it. So, we appreciate you joining us. If you want to follow along with Brent on Twitter, you can do that at Santiago AU Fund. You can follow me at John Katsmita. You can follow the show both on Twitter and on YouTube using the handle Milkshakes Pod. And that'll do it for our Flash update. We'll talk to everybody real soon. You got to pump it up. Don't you know? Pump it up. You got to pump it up. This show is provided for entertainment and informational purposes only. It should not be relied upon as legal, business, investment, or tax advice. Neither the hosts, guests, nor any funds they may manage intends to make an offer or solicitation for the sale or purchase of any specific securities, investments, or investment strategies.